Welcome to Art Palm Beach, right here in the heart of the Palm Beaches at our gorgeous convention center. This is truly an incredible event. And in case you didn't know it, the Palm Beaches truly is the crown jewel of the entire state of Florida for all things culture. We have world-renowned art, music, and of course, events just like this. We're here with the extraordinary director of Art Palm Beach, Cassandra. This is amazing. How did you put this together in such a short period of time, relatively speaking? It is a huge endeavor to put this together in four or five months, but I am excited of what we managed to do. I'm excited of the diverse amount of galleries from all over the world, different artists, different museums, supporting the community. The turnout is wonderful. So. From my perspective, coming from the West Coast, I wanted to bring that vibe a little bit and also just bring in an international component so that your community here in Palm Beach could get the opportunity to see a gallery from Spain, a gallery from South Korea, a gallery from, you know, obviously the local galleries. So I bring that to the community here. Mark Borgi, what an incredible collection you've got. Tell us a little bit about it. We primarily focus on American art beginning post-war, which is 1948, and it runs all the way up to about 2019. What are you looking for when you're collecting art? What, what really makes the cut for you? You know, the classic line is buy what you like, but for me, it has to be buy what you like, but there should be history behind it because it becomes a deeper, richer experience. Like over our shoulder, looking at a drawing by Keith Haring. Now, in 1982, Keith Haring went into the subways in New York and did these drawings on the subway walls. So these are really rare, and it's a piece of history. So you have this wonderful graphic, the history, it's New York, it's the 80s, you have graffiti subways, it's amazing. For someone who's never attended an event like this, mm -hmm. what would you say to them to entice them to come out and see all the gorgeous art? Just come and look. Because the more you see, the more you understand, the more you understand, the richer the experience becomes for you. Hi, I'm Bruce Helander at Art Palm Beach, and this is a show that I've put together using commercial imagery from magazines, billboards, and what have you. This is called Diver, is an old guy who's jumping in the water, and it actually was a Norman Rockwell illustration in the 1930s. I do a lot of work with billboard imagery, especially from the 1920s and 1930s. Originally this said Pleasure Bound, it was about a family on the way to a drive-in theater. It has been customized to say Palm Beach or bus. Basically my career has been making collages, bits and pieces of paper from advertising magazines that come together and make a collage. My favorite two artists are Picasso and Brock and I often appropriate the image into something else. So this is a classic Picasso image, probably about 1940 or so, where I take the image, then I dress it up with other kinds of things. Here is another appropriation of uh, Picasso, open arms. It literally was a Picasso reproduction that I cut and put these arms together like this. These two works are originated from matchbooks from the 1920s in Japan. They advertised houses of ill repute and nightclubs which you could not advertise, but you sure could hand somebody a matchbook with your telephone number. So these were originally this big and then they were blown up and then they were made a collage. So I'm following a long tradition of artists who manipulate material from a different source, mix it up, spin it around, and spit it out on canvas. And that is the story. Right here, what we are seeing is the evolutionary trail from 2D to 3D to 4D art. Every great painting that you see in what is absolutely the most happening contemporary art fair in the world right now here at Art Palm Beach, every great painting that you see here was made with golden acrylic paint. Tom Golden, Jean-Marc Golden of golden acrylic fame. I'm Paul Fisher, I'm an art dealer. 
I began as a 3D art dealer, basically, with Dale Chihuly. These works right here are a conceptual art piece, as I term it as an art dealer. The satire is created by Dan Hoban. NFTs are a way to show digital ownership of digital art onto the blockchain. So NFTs stands for non-fungible tokens and allows people to own for the first time items on the blockchain. The Sad Times is a story about a sheep who's on his never-ending search for happiness. And it's a dynamic, ever-evolving piece of art. And so the way it was delivered actually is that when you first received it, it went through many, many phases. And it would go from its birth to its childhood. And then ultimately, like all sheep must do, it had to get a job. That's the story of the sad times. It's really a commentary and satire on society and how people and society makes people mindlessly behave, sometimes like sheep. And we hope that it's a cute, funny character that helps people actually become more aware of their own actions and can become, ironically, less like sheep. Thanks for tuning in to Passport to the Palm Beaches. I'm your host, Jacqueline Journey. We're here with Jordi Molia. This is amazing. I mean, you're an incredible artist. A lot of people recognize you from films and TV, but you've been an artist for decades and a very talented one. Tell us a little bit how you got into the art world. How, when did you know you wanted to be an artist? No, no, I never decided to be an artist and probably I never decided to be an actor and that might sound like a typical answer, but it, in a way it's, it's true, you know. Actually, I didn't call myself an, uh, an actor like when after I did like 17 movies and then I started saying yes I'm an actor I've been doing this for <laughs> since I'm 27 and the day I will call myself an artist then it's over so I prefer just to go on and on and on with creativity basically you've got this really fabulous very large painting the Mona Lisa but you did something very interesting with the tennis racket and balls and how did you come up with that idea and what was your inspiration there? Sometimes you get tired of painting with brushes. So I wanted to paint with something different that is not a brush. So I had my racket and one night I looked at the racket and I thought, oh, racket and tennis balls, you know, because they are hairy so they can absorb the painting. And I don't know why, boom, this image of a huge Mona Lisa came in my mind. And I had a lot of fun. I did a lot of sport. I did an amazing painting. Now we just have to sell it. I'm also loving all of the video art that you're doing. And of course, this is enlisting a lot of your skill sets all in one. Is that your favorite? When you can sort of draw from different areas, you're obviously extremely creative in many different ways. I try to reproduce, since I'm an actor, in 272 photographs, all the expressions that a human being can, can make with the muscles and nerves. I'm an actor, so you have to put all kinds of faces, if you know what I mean. So then, it was like a very profound self-portrait of all my faces. I'm the man with the hundred faces. I paint, I'm a publisher, I'm a musician, I'm a producer, I'm a director, I'm a writer, I'm an actor, I'm a, I don't know how, I, how many things I am. But all of them is Jordi, Jordi Moya, it's like a home. Oh.